Dun, 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 Land sharks are circling. Parrot heads have been sighted. Volcanoes are smoking and tiki torches are lit. That can only mean two things. Don Ho is loose in OB, or Jimmy Buffett's back in town. Feeding frenzy in San Diego tonight. Breathe easy, San Diego. It's Jimmy. Back to start his world tour in a place that's close to his heart. Yeah, it's a real easy place. Besides having years of, of hanging out here and knowing where to go, knowing where to eat, knowing the good bars, and knowing the beaches and being able to run around like I want to, uh, everything's very convenient here. Jimmy's been touring for over 22 years, playing and singing songs that have his fan club of parrot heads still flocking in record numbers to hear him. He's been preparing for this tour for months, and though there have been some changes in the format of the show, it's good to know you can still hear some of your favorites. I don't even know where we are. I just went back and got things that I thought would be pleasing to the parrot heads to hear. And we put a little more polish on them. It's a little more Broadway, it's a little more theatrical, but it's still Jimmy Ruff. Jimmy writes songs of places he's been and of people he's met. One song he sings called I Heard I Was in Town is a true story of a young musician a long time ago coming to grips with stardom. I came back to Key West and you know, I was, uh, I saw airbrushed, bad airbrushed t-shirts of me on the streets with my name spelled wrong. You know, and then I realized, like it or not, I'd become a commodity in my hometown. Buffett is in town, and Friday night plays to a sellout at Aztec Bowl. Tomorrow we'll talk more with Jimmy and find out some things you probably don't know about the man from Margaritaville. Tim Flannery, News 8, Symphony Hall. Buffett's had quite a few summers of rent cars and westbound trains in his 22-year career. Tonight he starts another one right here in San Diego. And for Jimmy, even though a lot of things have stayed the same over the years, he has had some changes in attitudes. I went through the phase when I wrote the songs that now, <laughs> with all the personal experience, I was doing a lot of the things. I mean, I was, I rocked and I had a roaring time for a good many years and I don't apologize for it and I don't regret it but I don't do it anymore and I wouldn't advocate it to people I was a lucky boy to get through a lot of this stuff Jimmy still rocks now don't think when you go to a Jimmy Buffett show you're not gonna have fun but at 44 years old and a veteran of the business he's learned what it takes to stay on top and where his priorities are I'm more into watching my daughter grow up now or the challenges that are ahead to keep a viable career and defy the odds, which I do. Jimmy's not only defying odds in the music industry, he's getting rave reviews as a writer. He's been working on a new book about the life of a seaplane pilot. This comes on the heels of his first successful novel, which is called Tales from Margaritaville. He knows how far he's come. It took a nun with two rulers, you know, a lot of spankings to get two pages of notes out of me in high school. Now I'm sitting here potentially looking at a four or five hundred page book and it's amazing to me that I can produce that. Looking back at my hard luck days, I really do have to laugh. Jimmy's always been stereotyped as a beach bum who much rather drink a margarita than anything else. But behind the music, there's a man who's concerned about much more. And if he could, would change a few things. I would concentrate on teaching kids to read as opposed to anything else at an early age because no matter where they come from, no matter what economic background, um, reading excite, to me excites the imagination and if you're, not, if you're not born with a silver spoon in your mouth it certainly gives you an insight into what's out there because if you don't read you're lost. 
And the other thing I'd do is I'd make anybody that was an elected official who was going to Washington, I'd make them walk by the Vietnam Memorial every day on the way to work before they decided to send people to war and think about it before they, from the standpoint of what they're affecting. Jimmy's been affected by all he's seen and learned through the years, and you can tell he's got a lot more on his mind these days than just getting a cheeseburger in paradise. Tim Flannery, News 8, Symphony Hall.